everyone, my name is Pam Curry and welcome to this, the Microsoft subject series from TA Scotland on English teaching and how you can use Microsoft 365 as an English teacher in Scotland. Um, we're going to cover a few things tonight. We're going to look at a kind of National 5 uh, context. We're going to look at poetry in particular and some Edwin Morgan poetry. It was always a favourite of mine when I was teaching English. Um, we're going to have a little look at OneNote. We're going to move into how we could use Sway as a kind of creative writing prompt. We've got a couple of assignments set up in Teams. We've got um, kind of use of words in terms of you know commenting on a group activity and then we're moving into Flip formerly Flipgrid, to see how we could use um, that Microsoft tool and the kind of video aspect of it. And if we've got time, right at the end, we're going to have a look at this AI stuff that everyone is obsessed with and then see how we could use ChatGPT to help us plan some of our English lessons. So I'm just going to jump in and share my screen. We'll get started. It's a short session, this. Um, it's a really quick one. Hit us up on Twitter. Um, we can take comments on Twitter. You can give us comments uh, through YouTube comments as well. I'm Pam Curry, TA on Twitter, and we are also TA Scotland. Um, I'm just going to jump in now and share my screen, and we'll get started with the first little activity. Um, just give me two seconds to sort that out. Okay, so now that I've got that horrible um, screen sharing thing going on here, we're straight away and we're into OneNote. So just a reminder to you, if you've never used OneNote before, I know most of you will be familiar, but if you're not familiar at all, remember it's in your Microsoft 365 app collection. You're looking for OneNote here, and what we've got here is a kind of digital ring binder that we can use to pull together content for our English class. So let's talk about the kind of layout of this just now. We've got one little section here for in the snack bar. If I were using this one notebook as a block of poetry, I could easily add in some other sections there. And I might look at another Edwin Morgan poem as part of that. And trio would be one that I might have taught when I was teaching English. So one of the great things I'd like to just flag up straight away here is that we've got the poem embedded. So poetry, you know, is a kind of, it's better to be read, it's better to be listened to, a lot of kind of auditory um, devices at play there. So for me being able to, this is, you know, a big advantage of the digital world, being able to share audio and being able to share multimedia content with our pupils. When I was teaching this back in the day, I would have read it aloud, but if you hadn't been in my class, then you wouldn't have been able to hear me reading it aloud. And yeah, we might have had other ways to share audio, but just being able to take the embed code here from the Scottish Poetry Library on SoundCloud and just have pupils be able to access that there is incredible. And um, the next thing that I want to flag up in our OneNote notebook is the fact that we are able to use this as a way of annotating our poetry. So something that I used to do all the time was annotate aspects of the poem live with my pupils. And without digital tools, that was kind of tricky. We had things like overhead projectors, remember them? And, you know, of course we would do it on the, on the blackboard and whatever as well. But um, the, the fact that we're able to do this live now using one note and just you know draw attention to the alliteration here in the first line and um, by underlining these c's and um, to find that um you just need to go to this draw tab up the top there and then i've selected a pen you could change the color of course but it just allows you to just kind of right underneath now think about the power of this in the context of your actual classroom so this is great to be able to provide this as a kind of asynchronous anytime resource to pupils and that of course one of the benefits of the digital world but actually using this now as a display opportunity in our classroom is really powerful as well so what i would do if i were teaching this poem now if i were lucky enough to have a touch screen device like an ipad or a surface then i would be doing this live cast my projector, everyone could see me annotating it and talking about it as we go through. So the, the inking and drawing capabilities within OneNote 
are just a massive advantage for me as an English teacher, pointing out poetic devices and features and just being able to give my pupils that kind of any time lasting document now for revision and whatever else. Um, so another couple of things to point out just here while we're on um while we're looking at um, OneNote, um, you'll notice that I'm able to add in little text boxes um, next to the poem just to kind of analyze and do that kind of are you e stuff on the on the poem and just keep that again as a kind of lasting legacy of our poetic analysis. We've got some links in here as well. And you can see very quickly how this could build up to be a really powerful um, collection of resources on this poem. Um, moving forward as well, the, we now can embed forms into OneNote. So you might not have known this, but we can now embed forms. So if you go to the Insert tab, you will see you have forms here, and that enables you to just put in little bits of assessment in the middle of your page. So you see I've done that here. We've got in the snack bar stanza one, we've picked out the first line, and we've asked our learners which poetic technique is being used here. We know, of course, that that is alliteration. And they'd be able to just jump in and, and, and do that little assessment as we're going through. We could add multiple of these, of course, and we could begin to build up this real kind of in-depth analysis of our poem. So remember, of course, OneNotes can be shared. You could also do this as a OneNote class notebook um, and just have activities built within that um, sharing space as well. So um, you can see as well, we've also got critical essay questions. So the way OneNote works is it works in sections. It's a bit like a ring binder. Remember the old ring binders? So you've got your sections and then within your sections, you have your pages. So I've got critical essay questions in there as well. And what we've done here is just take all the critical essay questions that we could find that would relate to this poem. So these would be some of the assessments that the pupils might encounter in their exam that we'd be able to use in the snack bar as a poem. So we just pulled them together there. And then we've got another little page um, called The Poet, where presumably we could pull together information, biographical information about Edwin Morgan as the poet. So hopefully that's been useful um, for you to see how you could use OneNote. And what I'm going to do just now is I'm going to jump into another Microsoft tool, and this time we're going to be looking at Sway. So in terms of Sway, um, that's not the right, that's not the right link. Um, in terms of Sway, what we've done here is just show how we could use Sway really simply as a creative writing prompt. So you'll know in terms of the folio, in terms of creative writing, us English teachers are always trying to inspire our pupils to write creatively. And photographs can be a really powerful way to do that. So we've got this um, creative writing sway that we're pulling together. And if I just click play on that, that is not a very high resolution image. Um, if you play, press play on that, you can see that we've got these kind of, we've got this nice cover image. And then as we move through, we've got these kind of powerful photographs that could inspire creative writing. So these kind of images that just give you a sense of character um, and would inspire our learners towards, um, you know, effective creative writing there. Sway is a great way to do that. That image is a wee bit pixelated, so I would probably replace that with another one. Um, but yeah, Sway is a great way to just pull together images really quickly. I'll just quickly show you how we do that. Um, this one here I wasn't happy with, so I'm just going to delete that. Um, but I really like this guy we've got here. What we would do is just hit the plus button. We then go to image, and then of course we could search images here. So maybe we'd look um, for a happy old lady this time. Um, so we just search up our image. One thing to point out here is um, that's really useful from a kind of responsible use point of view is that the default here is to search Creative Commons images only. You can switch that off. If you were to do that, then, you know, you would be probably a little bit irresponsible. Um, but just to keep yourself right, I would recommend keeping Creative Commons only on, and that means you're free to use and share these images. I really like this one, actually. That looks like quite a powerful image. I don't know if it's really an old lady, but you can see how we can just really quickly build up images 
um, and make this into a really kind of dynamic um, HD image driven creative writing prompt. Um, when I was teaching English last, of course, the papers would have been photocopied images, and this is a much more powerful way to do that. Um, remember, of course, that you can just press play at any time to see what your presentation looks like. So you can see how these are all coming together. That would be great on the board, but you could also take the link and just share that with your pupils, either via, um, you could take, create a QR code, you could just take the link um, and you could put it into Teams as an assignment. Um, but it's just a really nice way to inspire creative writing. Um, I'm going to jump in now to Teams um, and just show you how we were able to take this kind of concept of English teaching with Microsoft tools a wee bit further. And we've got a couple of assignments in Teams just to look at. So I'm just going to go back um, to my assignments tab. So we've got this um, group activity here that I'd like to look at now. So we've called it a creative writing group activity. And if I go up to the three dots, we can see this now from the point of view of the student. So the student view is really handy just to see what they're going to see. Um, so I've set this up as an assignment using a Word document, and it's set to make a copy for every student. So we're going to get one student in each group. This is going to be a group task. Students are going to analyse this piece of creative writing. So this is a kind of good example of a creative piece for a Nat 5 English folio piece. So we've pulled that together, and the activity that we'd like the pupils to do is to analyse this in a group and use the comments feature in Word to reply to my questions. So we're just going to see what that looks like. I'll click on the document and it'll open up for us and we can see that we have this example folio piece now. And this little comment icon here gives us as a pupil an indication that there's a comment there for it for us to read. So the comment that we've got there is what is the impact of that sentence? And all we'd ask the pupils to do there is just reply to that. So you can see here, I've highlighted it, I've added the comment, and what we'd expect the pupils to do now is just to reply to that. Um, so the answer we'd be looking for here is um, that introduces tension, um, and then it makes us want to read on. Um, so we just add that in there, and then they just send that. And now because they've got a copy of this file each, I get one version from each group, and I'm able to go through their comments. To add a comment, all I need to do is handle bits of text, highlight, sorry, bits of text, and then just click on this little comment thing here, and I could just ask another question about that. If I wanted to be really clever and really personal with my kind of commenting, if this was an individual piece of work, for example, then we can at mention people as well. So I could take my colleague, colleague Niall and just at mention them and I could assign that. So maybe the groups come back and they've misunderstood one of the lines or they've you know not elaborated sufficiently on it. I could just comment back, assign it back to the person in the group. So it sends them a notification and just kind of engage in that feedback loop. Comments are really powerful. If you've not discovered them yet, I'd really recommend that you use the commenting feature as part of your kind of assessment and feedback process. Really easy to do using Microsoft 365 and Word Online. Um, and of course, when you do that, the, the students then have an example folio piece that's kind of analysed and that they know why it's a good one. So this would be a, this would be something that would be really kind of useful to me when I was teaching Nat 5 English. So we set that up in Teams and it was um, an assignment set to make a copy for each student. So um, I'm just going to go back and look at our next assignment. So this one's a little bit different. And what we've used this time is we've used Flipgrid. It's now called Flip. So just to clarify, Flipgrid has changed its name. It's now called Flip. It's the same tool. It works in the same way. So let's just have a little look about how, as an English teacher, I could use Flipgrid to have my pupils thinking in more detail about this poem in the snack bar. I'm just going to click on this assignment. 
And if we go up to the three dots again, let's look at the student view and see what we've asked them to do. So it just says, let me know your favourite technique. There's a link here, and when the students click on that link, they will be taken to Flipgrid to see the video introduction that I've made. Okay, so I'm not going to play the whole video, but it took me two seconds to record that little intro video there in Flipgrid. I've got a group for my class. So this is my class group. If I G Miss Curry, you can see that is my topic there. To create a new topic, I just hit this little plus button um, and I can give them an assignment from here. The topic in media, you could then insert an image. So again, taking that creative writing inspiration, you could put a nice image in here and then maybe ask them what they would write about this character, get them into the idea of thinking about characterization. We could record a video. So all I did to do that one there was hit record video. It opens up my little Flipgrid camera and all I need to do is hit this big button here and record. It's just a really easy way to engage with your students in a kind of asynchronous way um, and let them respond to you by video as well. Video is really comfortable for our young people. Some of them don't like to be on camera, so there's various things they can do over here just to kind of add text and whatever else. They could put emojis over themselves if they were a bit uncomfortable. But at the end of the day, it's a dialogue between you and your student, and I'm hoping that most of them I'll find that fairly comfortable. So this is our favourite technique one here. What they would do is they would just record their response to that. So they'd hit the record button there and it'd open up for them. And now they would be able to record their response. They can kind of stop and start and pause it as they go. Um, but that for me as an English teacher would really give me an insight into the kind of understanding of my students um, and, and to make sure that they're thinking in that kind of analytical way when it comes to our poetry. We've not got much time left at all, so I'm just going to jump on to ChatGPT, this new AI technology, and show how quickly we could use AI to um, plan a series of lessons for us, help us with our productivity as an English teacher. This is integrated into Microsoft, becoming integrated into Microsoft 365. If you're not aware of this great um, race for the AI, um, the, I suppose, success story, there's, there's all sorts going on where Microsoft just now having invested very heavily in chat GPT and open AI, they're integrating it now to Teams, to Bing, across the product suite. We can expect really exciting things to happen on the back of this. But let's just show you how easy it is to get this artificial intelligence technology to help us as an English teacher, plan a series of lessons. So all we do is we go down here to this little box. Um, down the bottom, I've got a question that I've kind of pre-populated. And what I've asked it to do is plan a series, lesson, series of lessons for a Scottish Nat 5 class on the poem In the Snack Bar by Edwin Morgan. So let's just look and see how artificial intelligence can help us do that. So I just hit return. And um, what's happening is having a wee think about it. Um, and what I would expect to happen now is it would plan me this kind of series of lessons. I love that it always starts with the word sure, because it's very conversational, it's a chat. So it's like, sure, here's a series of lessons for you. Um, and actually, this is exactly how I would approach my series of lessons. We might obviously want to go and take this a little bit further. We might want ChatGPT to elaborate on it and just give us a wee bit more detail. But this is just kind of on the money in terms of what I would have done as an English teacher. We're at a really exciting time um, in this digital revolution just now. ChatGPT and this AI technology came out just in November last year. And it's fair to say that it is changing our world dramatically. So I think as an educator, get get into this now. It can help you plan lessons. I had it giving me quotes from Macbeth the other day. Check us out on Twitter and you'll see some ways we could, you know, get quotes from Macbeth or get it to to, to give us um, a series of lessons 
on the play itself. So it's just working away for us in the background. It's like having a wee staff member there just to help us plan a series of lessons. We're not saying that this is always going to give you, you know, brilliant, accurate, thorough content, but it's a great start and it really helps save time and help with your thinking. That's us kind of run out of time today. Um, I'm just going to stop sharing my screen and say thanks very much to everyone who joined us today for this session. Um, just before we go, I want to remind you that we have a little survey. So anyone who's joined us today, we really appreciate your feedback. Did you find it useful? It's only a short session. We weren't able to go into a great amount of detail, but hopefully you've picked up some tips there just as an English teacher and how you can begin to pull together Microsoft tools and use them in effective ways um, to do your job. So check out the survey, please. It's bit.ly slash TAS dash ENG365. Um, it's a quick survey form. We'd really appreciate your feedback. It means a lot to us. But all that's left for me to say just now is thank you very much to everyone who joined us live or who's catching up at a more convenient time. And check out all the rest of the Microsoft subject series. We've covered expressive arts. We've covered um, maths. There's social subjects in there as well. We just tried to do something a little bit niche for each subject area. And we hope you find them useful. Thank you. And we'll see you next time. Thank uh...